some of the objects I'm going to talk about were already mentioned here by Emma Kaula in her wonderful talk two days ago on nakedness, dress, and delamid figurines, including this one, the sitting woman from Chetau Fiuk. But I will discuss them from the different point of view. Why have I chosen this figurine, which is not the most ancient, not the first one to be found, and is exhibited not in the most known museum, which is the Museum of Anatolian Civilizations in Ankara, Turkey. And it's re uh, really a shame because it is a wonderful museum. My reason was that uh, here we can see several interesting characteristics at once. It is a depiction of a larger side weight wise woman who apparently has some kind of authoritas power, some sort of connection with the nature, hence the feeling heads uh, as the hand rests. She is related both to the much earlier and much later traditions. The attempt to correct the figurine, hence the head, which was absent, namely broken off when the figurine was found. And mostly because we have no idea whatsoever, uh, who is it or what is it, who has made it and why. And we don't know, don't uh, have any hope to ever find out. The 1864 Paul Euro has found at Algerie Basset the first prehistoric figurine that came to the public view in the modern era. He named her Venus Impudic, or Venus Impudica in Latin, in the contrast to Venus Pudica, Aphrodite of Cnidos by Paxiteles, 4th century BCE. So, when the first time the prehistoric figurine has been named Venus, it was because of her nudity and the strongly incised certain body parts, and not because the archaeologist thought that uh, she was a prehistoric ideal of beauty. Started in 1892, some mammoth ivory figurines were also found in southwestern France in Brassempuy. In uh, 1898, Salmon Reinach has published uh, several steatid figurines from the caves of Balzerossi, Italy. Since then, more than 200 prehistoric figurines became known, and they are still called Venuses, which should be Veneris in plural and Latin. Some of them, also, although no, not all of them, are of uh, an exaggerated female form. And it has been even suggested that those uh, women suffered from some kind of genetic disorder called steatopigia, which is apparently not correct from the medical point of view. Anyway, the term prehistoric Venus is usually associated with rather stout body form, mostly after the discovery of the famous Venus of Willendorf in 1908. The most recent one to be discovered uh, is Venus from the Holy Fels Cave, Germany. Here is the cave. Uh, the figurines are made of stone, mammoth, ivory, bone, uh, or baked clay. The women are mostly depicted standing, sometimes seated. Arms and feet are often absent. Uh, and the head is usually small and faceless with a rare exemption of lady from Basimpui, or just a haircut is depicted. Uh, although it has been suggested that those were made of perishable material. We should also consider the originally for, that the originally uh, some of them did have clothes also made of perishable material, much as the modern dolls or the Greek and Roman statues. Most of the figurines Agravetia, but there are also at least two known objects which are much older Venus of Tantan, Morocco, and Venus of Berhatram, Israel. Those objects have been created by natural geological processes, given it a general uh, human like shape that was recognized by early men and was taken as a monument, just as the uh, Makapangsat 
uh, Pembo uh, from South Africa, dated by 3 million years BCE, not even by the time of Homo erectus, but of an Australopithecus. I would suggest that the Palladium mentioned in the Trojan cycle also might be such an object, some kind of ready-made art sent from heaven, since it is depicted as lacking any human form, but still somehow representing Athena. Here are some of the most notable prehistoric figurines by the chronological object, uh, order. Of course, uh, I'm going quite fast, but you can found all the information uh, with the internet. It's uh, quite accessible. Um, of course, there are other objects depicted in the Paleolithic art. Uh, some of them raise obvious, like the animals, and some of them obscure, like uh, the hands in several caves. The tradition of depicting opulent women continues into Neolithic. And here we are back in Chateau uh, There have been several female figurines found there, including the seated woman. Those depictions, of course, uh, resemble the depictions uh, of the Trakian uh, goddess Kibele. Here, the seated woman. And here's Kibele. The women in Chetalhuyuk have been using some beautiful objects as well as quite mundane kitchenware. Female figurines are known from the Yamukian culture, from Mesopotamia, from mega settlements of Kukutini Tripilia culture. Here yeah, it's a very interesting culture that came very close to the invention of writing, but never did it, and from Indus Valley. And still, we don't know what they are, since we obviously don't have any text about them, unlike the teraphim discussed here by Dan early today. They are often mentioned as a fertility goddesses or mother goddesses, which is not at all obvious. Rather than try to decipher the original cultural meaning of the ritual function of those figurines, uh, what I suggest is a discussion on the models which might uh, have given the ancient artist an inspiration for the depiction of plump women. Some of strange figurines, figures uh, that appear in prehistoric art might be inspired by the con conscious altering substances as it has been suggested regarding the dancing shaman or the Rasulian star, but could be the models uh, for the figurines be real? Who could afford to be plump during various ages? During those ages, as far as we know, then the food was, has been rather scarce and most people had, uh, had to work quite hard to attain some. Being myself, quite an overweight person. I know that this condition is usually caused not only by the abundance of food, but also by the lack of the physical exercise or any movement at all, thanks to, to the lecture and by Zoom. And who could afford not to move most of the time? Probably uh, the most uh, likely answer is the wise woman, heroes or female shamans of sorts. And they could afford not only the food and the rest, but also the exceptional living arrangements depicted in the much later epic tradition. In Odyssey by Homer, there are depictions of the garden of Calypso in the first book and, and of the garden of Kirke in the 10th book. Along with the wild beasts and the conscious altering substances served by the hostesses which is somewhat unusual since the depiction of the natural landscapes are very rare in the classic literature. Martin West in his book, The Western Face of Helicon, writes that uh, Calypso and Kirke are actually the same figure originated from Siduri uh, of the epic 
of Gilgamesh, the ninth and tenth tablets. Siduri has a garden which is made of precious stones. And what could inspire such an image? I think uh, it could be a cave illuminated by the torches. And we know that caves have served cultic purposes in prehistory and later on, such as Hilazon Cave in the Northern Israel, where we find an unusual bureau of um, a woman known as the shaman or the turtle's lady. There were some strange objects found there, such as a human foot here, uh, uh, or a visual skulls, along for the several dozens of turtles, which could be remains of the feast held during the burial ceremony, or the burial gifts for the dead. The body of the woman was also covered by flowers, as uh, the huge amount of pollen found their shows. So we might suggest that during the prehistory, there were women who have had a knowledge in healing customs or ritual formulas and texts, skills maybe in poetry, music and performance, some persuasion abilities and certain charisma or the authority so that the people have been bringing them food and who have had uh, who have not had to gather their food themselves or walk. Some of them were also walking from home or rather from a cave. It means a shaman or a witch of sorts. I would like to dedicate this talk to the memory of my great grandmother, Justina Helginen, near Repo, who was also a healer or a witch, as some of her fellow villagers called her.